Selamat datang di podcast NFL pertama di Indonesia. Baik, sama gue Valio Oscar di Zero Noise Podcast. Dan Super Bowl 56 sudah selesai. Congrats buat Los Angeles Rams yang jadi juara. Wey, gila ya. I'm so happy, I'm so happy. I'm nah, ini so persis nih di bawah gue nih. Tuh, <laughs> ini fans... Rams yang kemarin tuh nangis ya, nggak apa-apa nangis, justru emosional tuh harus ditunjukkan jangan diumpet-umpetin, ya iyalah itu berarti beneran ngefans gitu. Nah tuh kemarin Nuha uh, ngerayain kan. Nah, My thing is actually really go when the announcer said when the announcer said what the Los Angeles has won the Super Bowl 56. My thing is actually go really hard because man, I I'm waiting for almost 20 years. 22 years ya. Eh? 22 tahun sejak Super Bowl 30 berapa ya? Super Bowl 3 22 berarti 56 kurang 22 yeah, 34 ya, yeah? 34 I guess. Yeah. 34. Kurt uh, Warner year. Ya, yeah, Kurt Warner yes. year. Yes. Warner When year. he the last time MVP won the Super Bowl is It was Kurt Warner in yeah. Super, uh, 2000 Super Bowl ya. Oke. Okay. Nah, kan biasanya kalau podcast nih, uh, biasanya kan gue berdua kan sama Oka. Nah, ini spesial karena review. Nah, ini berempat. Nah, ini balik lagi nih Fadil Ohayo di sini. Nah, terus yang tadi gue bilang nih bahwa gue dan Nuha yang udah pakai jersey Rams karena eh, Rams ini juara. Dan... Of course. Nah, ini jadi ke, sekarang podcast-nya uh, bilingual ya. We have a very very special guest in our podcast. If you uh, if you follow us and probably watch our event with at America. America. Uh, earlier, you know, this is our very special guest. Uh, please welcome Mark Neighbors from US Embassy. Hey, how you doing? Hey, okay. Uh, so Mark Uh, we are going to review the Super Bowl uh, from the game, halftime show, ads, ads. Of, uh, of course, we're gonna review the advertising because uh, it's not Super Bowl if there's no advertising. Right. Of course. So, okay. Uh, nggak pakai lama. Jadi, kar- yang tadi gue bilang ya, ini well, podcastnya bakal commercial talks. Yeah, <laughs> karena. <laughs> Karena ini podcastnya bilingual, jadi sekalian buat belajar bahasa Inggris ya. Nah, jadi sebelum mulai jangan lupa seperti biasa kalau kalian nonton di video podcast subscribe, klik konsen subscribe biar nggak ketinggalan sama NFL di Indonesia. Like, comment, share video ini. Semua sosial media kita udah kita tulis di deskripsi video ini. Langsung aja join semuanya nggak usah malu-malu biar nggak ketinggalan. Karena walaupun musim NFL selesai, ini sebentar lagi bakalan ada free agency ini. Free agency-nya bakalan gila ini. Apalagi posisi WR ya. Karena ada satu hot name kayak Davante Adams yang masih belum tahu nih gimana nasibnya. Nah, sama draft of course. Walaupun ya, ya gue sering bilang kan nih prospek QB tahun ini nggak jelas. Tapi ya, ya NFL nggak cuma QB masih ada OL masih ada safety itu OL prospeknya deep, WR juga deep lagi dan lain-lain. Jadi langsung aja join semua sosial media kita. Oke, jadi. Uh, we will begin our Super Bowl 56 review. Rams became became the second team in NFL history that won in their home uh, stadium ya. Karena yes. tahun kemarin yes. uh, Tampa Bay Tampa Bay Buccaneers juara di Raymond James Stadium. Nah. Ah. Uh, no Ya. Yeah. <laughs> Coba no, ceritain lagi no gimana reaksi lo akhirnya waiting for 22 years. Yeah, ya, ya, years. Ya, yeah. uh, ya, uh, ya uh, sebelumnya kan sempat masuk ya in Super Bowl 53 against yes. you know, ya yeah, Tom Brady and Patriots <laughs> and they lost 13 13-3 now. They hmm. won 23-20 against the young guns of Joe Burrow and Bengals. No, you know, reaksi no cerita e. Iya, yang pasti after the trade of Matthew Stafford, I, I believe since day one we yeah. gonna make it to the Super Bowl. Oh, day one. After the trade okay. of Matthew Stafford and Jared Goff, I was believing we're gonna make it to the Super Bowl mm. because. 
and at the first game of the first game against Chicago Bears. Chicago Bears, yeah. I first remember. snap, first drive, Touch first snap for the Rams. He make an, I mean, play play action pass. Oh, play action pass, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Play action pass, and he throw very deep to the Vine Jefferson, and it was a touchdown. Itu kayak, Oof. man, in, 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 this is this is the quarterback we already we. All been we waiting for, for a long yeah. time. So many years <laughs> to find this quarterback, and we found it. Who can expand the play? Who can make a play without 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 his coach? I mean, without any guidance from Sean McVay. Yeah. Also, he can make the play because yeah, we waiting it for so long because after after that Super Bowl 53, mm-hmm. when we lost against Patriots, obviously mm-hmm. we don't made it and we don't made it and stuff. We after that Super Bowl. Super Bowl drunk, Super Bowl drunk. We, even though we have a still a half winning season, our offense is like like downgrading. The grading is so bad because Sean McVay is still depending with the running game. Yep. And Todd Gurley was heavily injured at that season, so yeah. our running game is not playing very well. Jadi ya uh, agak susah juga gitu harus depending sama Tom Gurley terus terus Todd Gurley terus terusan kan. Yeah. Totally. And then and and that season. We trade again our our first draft pick again for Jalen Ramsey. Not yeah. only one, but two for two years, two 2020 years, yeah. and 2021. Yeah, is that that's a huge gamble? But it actually worked out because in the 2020 season, we got we have a number we have the best defense in the NFL. Number one, number yep. one defense because our our defensive back is really really good. Yep. Tapi ya memang akhirnya kita harus terpaksa kalah with Green Bay Packers. And back then Aaron Donald was injured. I think in third quarter or fourth quarter, I guess, because mm-hmm. yeah, because of that we we lost really we lost in yeah. divisional round. And finally we got the quarterback. And as as the season goes, we 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 win in the NFC West and and we make it Super Bowl. So I believe this is the one. And finally we got it. Hmm. Oke, okay, nah, uh, Mark, uh, mm-hmm. what's your reaction when Rams won the Super Bowl 56? Yeah, I think what impressed me the most is, I mean, it's exactly what you want out of a quarterback in a big game. Yeah, for kind of like Stafford, he didn't let the interceptions kind of get him down. You know, he still was sort of plugging away at it. And uh, I was pretty impressed too, just that that Sean McVay. It seems like he really, and a few other you know analysts have said this too. So this is not the most original thing, but that seems like Sean McVay really learned from the last Super Bowl. Yeah. Like, you know, in that Super Bowl, once the Patriots figured out how to shut down the run game, Sean McVay just abandoned it. Whereas this time, even though they were getting really barely any yards, you know, per carry, mm-hmm. the fact that He was still going to it just to kind of keep the uh, Bengals defense off balance. I thought mm-hmm. was pretty effective, and yeah, just Matt Stafford just is so cool under pressure. You know, just plugging away, and just the fact that at the end they were like, "Look, we have the best player on the field, offensive player on the field, in Cooper Cup." Just you know, basically just probably telling him every huddle like, "Just find a way to get open. I'll get you the ball." Like, just give me like this much room. We'll do it, and having that kind of confidence in your team uh, and in a player, it was just it was impressive. Uh, and then on the other side, I thought uh, Joe Burrow, you know, he played pretty well, but I think you can yes. see the immaturity, or not the immaturity, but the inexperience, I should say, mm-hmm. uh, in in playing in that. You know, they started off being able to kind of hold off the Rams' defensive line at least a little bit because they were getting rid of the ball so quickly. Yep. And but you could tell he was getting impatient, especially when he had those couple big plays. All of a sudden, he's like, "Oh right, we can kind of go back to what I love to do, which is mm. throw these long bombs to Chase and to T. Higgin and everybody else." And then, so when he couldn't get it, he was getting frustrated, and they were getting away from what they what they were reasonably successful at in the first half. And then, but once you kind of become one dimensional like that when you're just looking for the deep strike all the time guys like Aaron Donald I mean they love that they love it when the quarterback is just sitting back there waiting to throw it because they're like oh goody you know now it's time to go get him 
and they sort of played right into what the Rams do best, which is just crush quarterbacks. So, <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay, so we are going to start uh, per quarter ya. Jadi di quarter pertama, Rams mimpin 7-3 ya. Touchdown-nya Matthew Stafford, deep right ke OBJ. Wah, gila oh, OBJ. So, Oke, okay. uh, gue gua ini ya, gue gua harus ngaku ya, gue menelan ludah gue sendiri. Oke, okay. <laughs> karena... O- OBJ karena, slender, ya gue <laughs> <laughs> Karena dulu gue... Uh, I was join uh, 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 I join uh, di OBJ Slender team but tapi karena setelah melihat OBJ ternyata oh bagus ya. <laughs> Jadi saya harus menelan ludah saya sendiri. Maaf ya netizen ya, maaf ya. <laughs> nah, uh, dari eh uh, dulu, Dil. Uh, di drive yang touchdownnya Matt Stafford ke OBJ ini menurut lu uh, play-nya yang big play-nya kan ini ya ke Cooper Cup ya. Mm-hmm. Yang Cooper Cup yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 20 uh, 20 yard ya. Mm-hmm. Nah, itu kalau itu kan yang big play. Tapi kalau yang touchdown-nya itu terbukti enggak sih OBJ ini efeknya sangat-sangat Gede dan dibutuhin enggak sih OBJ buat musim depan karena kan nanti kita di second quarter bakal bahas yang dead injury ya. Oh. Kalau mau tuh gimana? Karena kan lu mantan kan OBJ kan mantannya Browns nih. Nah. Ya kan? Nah, itu, itu gimana mau tuh OBJ di Rams? For for the record, for the record. Ah. I I never doubted OBJ's ability. Ah. I always thought he's, he's a great player obviously. It's yeah. just I think within the Browns system it's mm-hmm. not necessarily we use his skill set to like mm-hmm. the utmost potential. So that's that's just me putting it out there. Right? And for me the the first touchdown drive was not necessarily about the big play before. It was about uh, the Bengals, they didn't convert a fourth and one. They went yeah. oh, for it. Yeah. And then they didn't get it and then now the Rams had a short field. So because I think like early in the game and throughout the game, you had mm-hmm. some chunk plays, not like super deep, but we have some of those. But like you have chunk plays and the ball was moving around. It was just not quite getting the point. Mm-hmm. So when one team had a short field, they're going to score. That's that's just how I think it is. So for me, it was there, there was people calling um, Zach Taylor out right like, What are you doing? It's like early in the first quarter. What what are you doing going for it for fourth down? I thought like it was okay because for me in, in a big game, if you want to make mistakes, make them early. So yeah. Yeah. Ah yeah yeah. Bener, bener, bener. Yes. To, to catch up, right? So if you got like fourth and one in the middle of the field, right? It was around 50 yards or something. Mm-hmm. So for like for me, like go for it. Like you can live with down like one score early on. So it's not it's not that consequential, right? So, so yeah, and I think the touchdown really kind of shine a light on like the Rams had a guy outside. We're not mm-hmm. just talking about every you know every shows before the Super Bowl. They're talking about Jamar Chase and then T Higgins playing on the outside. OBJ plays outside too, right. so I I think like uh, the Bengals had a good corner, uh, Chidobe Auzi. Auzi, yeah. Yeah, but but I think like on that, uh, on that touchdown, OBJ won that rep. It was a good coverage. It was just a, a better ball and then a great catch. So I think that's that's kind of how it went on that drive. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh... Kita sekarang masuk langsung ke ini ya, ke second quarter ya. Second quarter kan ini skornya jadi 13-10, Rams masih mimpin ya. Nah, tapi yang jadi, yang mulai ini ya, yang mulai jadi berubah banget when OBJ injured his, uh, well, Ian Rappaport said that 
uh, OBJ potentially injured is ACL, ya yeah, kan. Right. Tapi bukan ACL yang kemarin pas cedera yang di Browns ya, yeah. pas musim 2020 ya beda lagi. Yeah, the other leg. The other leg, ya. Yeah. Nah, um, so I wanna ask Mark, Mark. Uh, so SoFi Stadium use uh, turf grass, okay, and of course the risk of turf turf grass is non-contact injury. So and yes. OBJ injured with non-contact, okay. So do you think NFL and and I see that uh, lots and lots and lots of players are making petition to change. Uh, turf to real grass, okay. So, do you think uh, NFL should change all of uh, turf, uh, especially for those stadium who uses turf grass? Because I see the data, there are 16 stadium that use uh, turf grass, oh, wow. and yeah, 16, yeah, 16 uh, turf, 16 uh, real grass. So, do you think? All of 16 stadium that uses uh, turf grasses, turf grass should change to real grass because uh, the injury risk is really high, and you don't want your star player got injured because of non-contact injury. Because non-contact for me, non-contact injury is far, far way worse than oh, yeah, contact sure. injury. Of course. So, what do you think, Mark? Yeah, I agree. Actually, I think. I mean, you know. Uh, true turf and astro turf and the various kinds of sort of fake grass yeah that's obviously a much newer invention uh you know when football was first created it was meant to be played on natural grass uh, yeah kind of like that i mean you do have some other risks in in kind of bad weather cities with mud and stuff when yeah you do natural grass mm -hmm. certainly but for me that's a risk that's like always been part of the game so it's a little yeah. bit different of a calculus whereas mm. yeah with the turf injuries especially if you're a guy who hasn't been playing on it as much like obj since he didn't play you know multiple years on the rams because i think cleveland has a natural field cleveland natural grass yeah yep. and so it's it's an adjustment and he wouldn't have had necessarily the amount of time to kind of understand the risks and how you sort of have to adjust your running and, and, and your style of play to, to make sure it works okay. I mean, granted, turf does make for very, it tends to be super high scoring teams. It does because you yeah. can run really fast on turf in a way that you can't on natural grass. Uh, uh, it, you may risk losing a little bit of the offense, but in this era where teams are not having trouble scoring points. <laughs> yeah. so, and they've legislated a lot more of the defense out of the game. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably worth it to, to go back to kind of natural uh, grass. It's just like, you know, for a long time, they used to have dome stadiums was the popular thing in the dome. NFL. Like everybody wanted an indoor stadium uh, because of weather issues. But yep. you know, guys like Peyton Manning were like, no, football's meant to be played outside. And if, it's, if the weather's a little rough, that's just kind of how it's supposed to be. And so uh, they moved away from that, and now they have, even if they have a covering, they can take it off or put it on and off in a lot of different stadiums. Uh, and the other ones are just full open air. And so I think that that's, if they can change that, they can certainly change the, the field into more natural grass. I think that'd be better. Uh, okay. Uh, also, I think, I think the, the yeah, turf and then the natural grass situation might have something to do with it being indoor or outdoor. Is that is that is that how it works? I think that that may be part of it too. I mean, Los Angeles, the weather is perfect all the time, so it's yeah. hard to know yep. why they. I think maybe they did it just out of legacy from the St. Louis days. You know, oh, like the greatest show on show turf. The greatest show on turf. They were used to having a team that drafted or or, or signed free agents for speed on the yeah. turf, and so maybe they were like, let's keep that the same because it'll be it's more exciting for the fans, right? You get more touchdowns and and exciting kind of plays and, and and when you're drafting the speedy guys versus sort of the older style kind of grind it out <laughs> offense so. yeah okay Did he... but i still think but i still make an question mark for me because the weather in l, in LA is good it's really it's really warm weather but why are they still using turf i mean the the construction of so far is really heavy or heavy sun some right because 
much the sound wave is coming to the stadium, but yeah. why is why why the stadium is still using surf? But it's still a question mark for me. Uh, yeah, okay. it's true. Yeah, you're right because they would. It should be easy to to have grass there and keep it. Yeah. Maintained. Weather yeah. perfect is true. Iya, karena uh, kemarin kan gue sempat nonton juga ya. Ada kayak video tour gitu ya, video tour uh, berapa eh apa aja yang lo dapetin kalau lo beli tuh apa paket atau apa harganya sejuta dolar di Sofi kan. Nah kata, mm-hmm. nah itu videonya dari video channel GQ. Nah itu yeah, dia aja bilang di dalam Sofi panas karena kan gak ini. Ya, kan ya malam lah ya karena kan indoor hmm. ya kan of course yeah. uh, pasti kan pengep kan pengep cuman katanya luar ka- itu kan kalau nggak salah sofa itu nggak apa ada bagian kebuka ya masalah ya ada sih ada ada. ada ada kan ada. ada bagian-bagian yang kebuka kan nah itu katanya hmm. panasnya masuk juga <laughs> jadi makin panas udah panas di luar masuk jadi makin panas gitu jadi ya kalau gua cek juga ya ini uh, ada juga some of Uh, stadium that uh, that is not indoor, they are using turf like uh, Seahawks. They using turf. Hmm. Metlife, And, I think. Huh? Metlife, yeah. Metlife, Metlife, uh, Metlife. Kan udah terkenal tuh banyak yang komplain kan. Uh, Now there's so many, so many players are injured there. Yeah. Uh-uh. Yeah, no, that's true. Saquon Barkley, probably. Yeah, more yeah. More than anybody, that guy. Yeah. He keeps getting hurt on those fields. Yeah. So. And. And uh, I'm pretty surprised that uh, stadionnya Patriots tata pakai turf. Oh, padahal no, outdoor. Maybe, yeah. maybe with those because the weather is so rough. Yeah, yeah the yeah. weather is so cold. It's harder to maintain the grass. It, yeah, it, yeah. It has something to do with that. Yeah, because turf. Uh, karena turf juga ini ya, turf uh, keringnya lebih cepat ya daripada real grass gitu kan. Jadi udah pakai turf aja gitu. Because Internet Boston lebih gampang kali. Eh, yeah, because Boston is uh, I hear from my friends in Boston that uh, Massachusetts is always raining. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Raining or snowing, it's true. My sister went to undergraduate Yeah, in, uh, New England and she said, "Yeah, you don't see the sun for about six." <laughs> 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 Oke, okay, nah, uh, gue sekarang mau tanya ke Nuhan, Nuh, mm. um, pas lo lihat OBJ cedera itu, lo kayak merasa pesimis gak atau gimana gitu? Karena kan, ya OBJ ini kan ibaratnya kayak penggantinya Robert Woods yang cedera AC, yep. AC lo siapa AC? Yeah. I think it was ACL. Oh. ACL ya. Nah, oke. Okay. Uh, gimana reaksi lo pas OBJ cedera itu? Of course, I'm very sad, really, because it's a, it, it's a co- non-contact injury. Yeah. It's really hard to accept that we OBJ have a good game at that time. Yeah, and he he catch a lot of he catch a lot of passes from Stafford. He opened and get a touchdown. So non-contact injury is always scaring me because it could be it could be a bad thing for for OBJ, and yeah. and for and fortunately we still have Cooper Cup on the on the turf. We still have we have clubs. To, we still have Cooper Cup on on yeah. our team, Cooper so Cup. we can still extend the play. Although, and and I, I forget I forget the name. The number 18, Ben Ben Skoronek, is he he he, he, he he always drop the catches for ah. the big game. Um, for the big game, he always drop the he always drop the pass. Yep. And with <laughs> drop the pass for for his one handed catch, and after that he. The ball got intercepted. Yeah. So, and that was bad too because if you watch the replay on that, it looks like he stopped short on the r- yeah. on route too. Yeah. Like he yeah. stopped too early, and then he stuck his hand out, and you're like, oh no, just just knock the ball down if you're not going to get it. Yeah. I think if he he really he he forcing his way to stop early and catch the ball. He forced his way to make the one handed catch, and I think he 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 didn't see. His his back. You didn't see his back. Is there a corner? Is there a corner? He, he, the corner ready to catch the ball, and yeah. And, and then I was screwed up because, man, you could you could catch the ball. I think it's that it's not that um, a difficult a difficult a difficult pass. I think because, but I think it's just his timing it was not right. Right. Hmm. Okay. Oke, okay, uh, itu kan tadi first half skornya 13-10 ya. Nah, second quarter dimulai, bola dipegang sama Bengals, langsung touchdown. 
Joe Burrow 75 passing uh, yards touchdown to ini ya. Oh tadi uh, tadi second quarter kan sempat ini ya sempat touchdown juga ya uh, Bengals ya. Bengals yeah. yang touchdownnya ini uh, action play Joe Mixon. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Joe, Mixon, Joe Mixon throwing the ball to I, I forgot the name. Itu mirip mirip Philly special nggak sih sebenarnya? Uh, Ed Higgins as well. Yeah, I think I think it's a, a bit like uh, Philly special. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, no. Like the one no, that they want that... Philly special is the Rams, but it's incomplete. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Cup, yeah. cup to Stafford ya ketinggian ya. Too high. Yeah, yeah. It was too high for. But but deal. Uh, pas lihat touchdownnya Joe Mixon ke T Higgins ini, menurut lu uh, emang harusnya gitu apa gut sih kalau maksudnya uh, play nekat gitu kayak Philly Special dulu itu? No, like I said, like I said, I like how the Bengals came out. Mm-hmm. In in the Super Bowl, I always felt like you be aggressive early, you throw a trick play first. So mm-hmm. that if something went wrong, you can catch up. So mm. it's always, I, I, for me, in in a Super Bowl, I always watch for like who runs the first reverse, mm-hmm. a, a wide receiver, like jet sweep or like a reverse. Right. Because mm-hmm. because you can bet that coaches put that into it. Mm-hmm. And, and it always happens, and uh, you know, and and in this this case, it was a, a running back pass, right? Mm-hmm. It was gutsy in the sense that nobody else runs around. It's like T Higgins, and that's it. So yeah. if they don't bite on the run, that play mm-hmm. is dead. So. Exactly. Mm, okay. Okay. Was that on a second down? That wasn't a third down play, was it? It was no, at the. Second down, second down, second, second and goal. goal. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the kind of play you want to run on a second down. Yeah, when you because you still got basically two shots at the end zone or yeah. two shots at points yeah. after that if you make a mistake, and you just hope that he remembers to throw it away if the play's not there. Okay. It was it was kind of good in, in a sense that he took it, he took the ball first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and yeah. I closed it out. So like, yeah. if you saw as a as a defender, if you saw a guy like tuck the ball in it. You know, run sideways. You know, I'm coming down. Right. Then, exactly. So the the fake was carried out. At, you know, almost perfect in, in, in my eyes. Yeah, it was pretty impressive. Yeah. Okay. Abis itu next drive. Nah, ini sayang sekali ya. Matt Stafford lempar in di end zone eh. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Iya kan, di lempar ke Van Jefferson, terus di yeah. intercepted sama Jesse Bates, and then. Abis itu ada pemainnya tuh yang gak main ikut-ikutan <laughs> Gue jadi ini ngapa? Ini siapa yeah, ini I... masuk? I thought it was an intruder uh, from spectator who jumped into the, <laughs> uh, the field and then celebrate And then, oh that, uh, he he is an inactive player Fernand Hargreaves, <laughs> the third, oh my god And he cost his team uh, hmm. 10 yards penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct <laughs> Yeah <laughs> 15 Yeah, uh, t- uh, 15, but uh, ini ya, karena kan ada peraturannya uh, ah, half the distance, distance true goal ya, yeah, half the distance, yeah. distance nah. Okay. Uh, no, itu mm. kemarin pas lempar ke Van Jefferson and then inter- abis itu di interception, intercepted itu ini ya, Cooper Cup udah dijagain ketat banget ya, apa dia pakai short track? Uh, I think it was a, a heavy coverage from both corners, because... Mm. When when Stafford when Stafford looking the looking the players who can catch the ball, I think it was Van Jefferson was open, but but JC Bet had a good coverage and really have yeah. a good coverage obviously, mm-hmm. and so JC Bet can can catch the ball because he played a good game for the for the coverage. So I think it was just unlucky for Stafford. Not not so just unlucky, but I think it's quite underthrown underthrown ball oh, okay. because the ball is just quite on the body, not. The ball was dropped in the body, not dropped on his head. Because oh. I think, and because of that, I think it's an unthrown ball. And and Bay, it's got an easy. I think it, 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 it's a really easy, easy catch for the interception. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, okay. Exactly too, um, because it was third and fourteen. Yeah, yeah, third and fourteen. Like it was almost like just an early punt. Like that one, 
That is it wasn't. I mean, it was not great, obviously, but I, I don't think it was. I don't know that they would have been able to move it down the field. They anyway. were anyway in, in enough time to kind of get some points. So yeah. it wasn't a total loss. Yeah. Uh, itu kalau nggak salah interceptionnya abis ini, abis OBJ cedera nggak salah ya? Ah, uh, no, not, it was oh. after the touchdown. After the touchdown. Oh iya iya, oke oke. Nah tapi deal kalau lu lihat dari interceptionnya Stafford kemarin itu, yang di end zone itu menurut lu uh, memang Jesse Bates Coveragenya lebar banget Atau mungkin ternyata Jesse Bates emang didesain Buat ngerjagain Van Jefferson apa gimana Kemarin No, it was a, it was a broken play A oh, broken play Stafford ya rolls out, It was a pocket mm-hmm. Nothing happens And then he comes out the pocket And then he throws the pass So yeah. it was a late play mm-hmm. And then I think what Stafford sees Was that Jesse Bates was turning away Ah, oh, oke okay, oke, okay. ngadep ke yeah, kanan so ke like, kiri kali ya. So like he saw so I think quarterbacks are taught like if you saw the defender's back, he can't defend the pass. Yeah, of course. Yeah, benar benar benar. You just, just throw it because hmm. at best it would be incomplete. But mm-hmm. I think it's because I don't I'm not sure whether like because it's like super deep and then the pass is short mm-hmm. or it was because it was in the end zone. I think Van Jefferson kind of slowed down a bit, and then the ball didn't get like all the way to the back of the end zone. So like when Bates came, mm-hmm. he kind of realized that oh this guy is slowing down, so he mm-hmm. kind of looked back for the ball right. and the ball is there. Mm-hmm. So okay. it's not necessarily like Jesse Bates covering or anything. I think it was just like good situational football. You know, mm-hmm. he's, he's not going down the field. The, the end zone obviously is there. You can't go further. Right. So I'm just gonna look for the ball, and the ball is there. So. Hmm. Oke. Okay, nah. Uh, abis itu kan uh, first half abis ya. Eh? Uh, 13.10 and then uh, yeah for half time show yeah I enjoyed very much because it was my <laughs> my childhood memories of all yes. of them yeah, of course. Uh, because there, yes, yeah, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Mar- Mary J. Blige, Eminem, of course, my favorite, uh, Kendrick Lamar, and then third quarter. Nah, tadi kan sempat gue bahas, tapi kecepatannya karena gue baru nggak ada touchdownnya ya, maaf. <laughs> uh, long pass, Joe Burrow ke Tiggins, 75 yards touchdown, but there was a controversy. Nah, Mark Nibus udah praktekin tuh. <laughs> Mark, uh, did you think that Uh, you know uh, that uh, back when it was uh, like 2019 season, if I'm not wrong, yeah, uh, pass interference can be re- uh, reviewed, but uh, the result is pretty much failed. So they took it away, and right. it's not reviewable again. But uh, because T Higgins did that, katanya sih ini ya, apa? Uh, gak, kecongkel gak, atau gak, apa gitu lah hmm. kan? nah, he, well, uh, so he just touched it, but it's of course offensive pass interference uh, do you think uh, pass interference should be reviewed, reviewable again or yeah it's just another reverie error again Yeah, I think it's t- it's just so hard to review those plays because it happens so quickly. Oh, quick, yeah. I just because you know they they came out with a statement later saying you know we felt the contact was still incidental even mm-hmm. though uh, it looked more severe maybe on camera than maybe the refs felt it it actually was. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a tough. One. I just the thing that was tough for me was that. I think during the regular season, they just would have called it, of course. I feel like yeah. that call gets in the regular season, uh, especially if Dallas is playing, it's always against my Cowboys. Call <laughs> something like that. <laughs> oh ya, yeah. uh, kalau kalian belum tahu semua, ini Mark Neighbors adalah fans Cowboys. Jadi uh, kita tidak bakal membahas that QB draw-nya Doug Prescott ya. <laughs> No, this is Super Bowl 56 only, okay? Itu I know, I know, okay. sorry. <laughs> continue, continue, continue. I continue. shouldn't bring up my trauma. <laughs> <laughs> continue, continue. I feel like in the regular season, they call that play all the time. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it was just a bit of a surprise. At the same time, Ramsey got away with a, a hold um, earlier in the game. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's like, well, they figure they just it's like a makeup call or something. <laughs> you know, we sort of missed one before, but we're, we'll, we'll, so we'll miss it on this case where, where he had a legitimate kind of gripe about it. But it's still an incredible pass. I mean, it's still really impressive. <laughs> what a way to start the half off. Yeah. Fighting, yeah. It's like, oh, wow. Okay, this game is going to be different than I thought. Yeah. Karena kan pastinya di second half, second half pasti ada kayak adjustment gitu ya. Dan, wow, Bengals yeah. langsung touchdown. I was like, wow, the adjustment is pretty great. But then the re- yeah. replay shows that, oh, 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 okay. Tapi... Gue bakal membahas ini ya, kualitas wasit nanti ya. Karena uh, gue baca kemarin tweetnya, selama 55 menit pertandingan cuma ada 4 flag. 5 menit terakhir 4 flag. Nah, kan aneh hmm. kan? Tapi yeah. nanti ya, nanti di fourth quarter. Karena kita masih third quarter, oke. Okay. Uh, I, I, I think also why Joe have a really good play after that. After that third quarter, because I think he... He secretly listening to the Eminem Lost Yourself because he got <laughs> he got pump he got pump with the song because the lyrics of Lost Yourself and at the time even McPherson enjoyed the show he he, he didn't go to the back yeah yeah he didn't go yeah, to yeah. Great yeah. Stuff because he enjoyed he, he enjoyed so yeah Evan McPherson <laughs> uh, kemarin nggak ke locker room meeting loh ini nonton abisnya <laughs> kira apa yang mau dibitingin <laughs> udah tendang aja yang bener lah <laughs> oke okay. uh, next drive nah next drive tapi ini aduh Matt Stafford mau lempar ke scroll scroll renek di intercept sama Cidobe Auzie ya nah yeah. deal ini salahnya scroll scroll ah scroll ah his name is scroll renek itu masa salahnya scroll renek ya bolanya lepas terus diambil sama Auzie kan iya yeah, iya yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think like uh, um, the Rams had kind of like a default plan mm-hmm. early on where I, I think like OBG is going to work backside and outside and then we're going to play something to the middle for Cub. Yeah, I think that's kind of like a default plan. So I think like in the first half, OBG had like a one in cut that was pretty big too before the touchdown yeah, yeah, yeah. and then i felt like okay now who's gonna play that position right so i felt like after obj's injuries rams had, had kind of like feeling themselves first like who we can count outside of cup because i felt like early on i'm not sure whether it's like the bengals game plan for cup or something they put somebody on him or it was just i i think like uh mcfay learned from this like super bowl loss and then he kind of felt like okay i got cup and i can use it later i'm gonna figure things out for everybody else first right mm-hmm. there, there was kind of like that kind of vibe because like he kept running when it doesn't work Right, exactly. So, he was exactly kind of like figuring we're things out a little bit, not showing too many things before that last drive. So I think um, not necessarily scoring at fault. Well, he, he he's, he's at fault because I think as a receiver, if the interception happens by the person who's guarding right in front of you directly, that's your fault. But if it's like the next guy, if it's like the free safety or like the middle linebacker not in front of you, then it's the quarterback ball. I think that's that's kind of how it is. And you know, he stopped short, it hit his hands, and then it got intercepted. It is his fault to to a degree, but I think it was just the Rams kind of filling things a little bit. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Uh, next play. Yep. Sorry, man. Yeah. Are we gonna talk about the defensive stand after this? Uh, of course, of course, of course. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, cool. Okay. Uh, jadi kan ini kan abis interception. Sayangnya Bengals uh, field goal, field goal, and then pan, 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 and then uh, fourth quarter masih pan. Nah, pas lim apa? Sekira-kira lima menit 
sebelum match selesai nah ini ya nanti gue juga sekalian bahas defensif ini ya buat buat in overall ya defense ya karena Rams kan bikin 7 sack uh, bro uh. I think I think it the meme is reveal the meme is prevail when Oh ya 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 kalau lu tahu ini Ya, yeah. yeah, kalau lu tahu meme-nya Bengals ya sebelum draft itu kan ada meme-nya Buro kalau dijagain sama OL yang bagus kayak kemarin pas OL yang draft tiga kayak Penny yeah. Sewall, Rashon Slater, WR siapa aja ketangkep. Nah, eh eh ya yeah, ya yeah, ya yeah, yeah, bisa lah bisa, maksudnya bisa ke, uh, lama gitu kan di pocket. Nah ini satu lagi, Buro, OL-nya siapapun, tapi WR Jemar Cis ya lempar tapi eh gitu kan. Dia kayak mau and, udah... And, and, and also don't forget Buro as conf- confirmed and evit Jemar is going down somewhere. Oh iya 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 bener bener bener. <laughs> tapi kemarin juga Jemar mainnya menurut gue ya cuman ya 5 catch 89 oke. Okay. Tapi kan yang sering kebuka tinggin sih. Nah tapi ini oke. Okay. Kita di fourth quarter, oke okay, ini kan masih pan-pan-pan But then Rams megang bola 19 plays loh 19 plays tapi cuma 4 menit 48 detik Nah, oke okay, uh, I wanna ask Mark Mark, fourth mm-hmm. and one And then they did the jet sweep to Cooper Cup I uh, I think there's a one uh, crucial block from their tight end ya Kalau saya ada ini, tight end ya kan? Blanton, Blanton nih, Pak Nurul nih. Blanton, and he block, and then cut cut inside, and then went for first down. Mark, do you think uh, it's like uh, you know, like uh, the key play of this uh, touchdown drive, or change, uh, there's another play? Yeah, that was that was pretty crucial to me because it showed me that exactly that they were going to be like. If we're gonna lose, we're gonna lose at least trying to get the ball to our best athlete, right? Mm-hmm. Our best player. We'll find a way to get it to him, even if it's this trick, this jet sweep run play. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was incredible just how precise he was about it. It's really, I just, you know, for a guy, uh, obviously you expect him to be good at a lot of things, but just as a, you know, he played it like a. like an experienced uh, tailback back there. I mean, just knowing yeah. exactly where to cut. Most receivers, I think, would have... Would have gone to the right there, the sideline, I guess. Yeah, just tried to go to the sidelines and just get barely get a yard. And he got, what, seven yards? Seven yards, yeah, seven yards. <laughs> seven yards, wow. Really precise. And I was like, oh, wow, that was that was impressive. And and that was clear. It's like uh, uh, OH just said earlier, like, keeping cup in your back pocket until kind of later in the game like we've yeah. got some things we can do with him and we're confident that these plays will work we don't need to to overuse him early because we we'll, we'll have him ready when we need him to absolutely change the game so yeah that that to me was 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 big and it was it was exciting it was it was great I, yeah um of course that and the thing about that is that if that play fails everybody puts that on the oh, yeah, nobody blames that on the player because you'll just be like why didn't you just quarterback sneak or sneak, yeah. why didn't you just use one of your running backs that have been reliable all season because even if you're not getting much on the running game you're at least able to get a yard why would you try to be all cute with a trick play uh, so if that fails I mean, he looks terrible, and everybody, that's all we'd be talking about on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Probably is how Sean McVay outthought himself and, and failed again. So mm-hmm. it was, it was a, a, took a lot of uh, confidence to do that, and uh, it worked out well for him. Yeah, it was, it was very cool to watch. Yeah, talking about uh, uh, running play, uh, Cam Akers, uh, you know, just... 13 carries, only 221 yards. Uh. You know what's crazy is, uh, I looked this up, this stat up too before coming on here. The two lowest running uh, totals for a Super Bowl winning team, mm-hmm. it's both the Rams. It's the oh. 99 Rams and this Marshall Falk had 90 yards of catches, of reception. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ran for like 20 yards that game because that was – Back when the Rams just threw it every damn. So. Threw everything, <laughs> every damn ball, yeah, because they yeah, grew the so, show on third. Uh-huh. 
So they, they hardly ran. And, and because the Tennessee had a really good run defense. So yeah, right, they were like, we're not going to get anywhere with it. We'll just throw the ball all the time. So it's really funny. The number two is the L.A. Rams. And then number one is the 99 Rams. 99 Rams. Oh, Let's say okay. it was Rams with not, okay. like 24 yards or something on the ground. It was yeah. Really, kind of <laughs> okay. Nah, deal. Uh, buat ini ya, sebelum kita bahas ke drive selanjutnya ya. Deal. Uh, menurut lo apa ya? Kenapa running play-nya Rams di saat mereka ya di saat OBJ cedera tapi running play-nya nggak ngebantu gitu cuma 21 yards kayak maker sih. They they run into bad luck. What oh. I think bad luck. What the coaches would call it bad luck. Hmm. You don't run against eight man box. So for for most of the game, Bengals stayed in nickel they have four oh. down linemen they got two linebackers they right. played nickel mike Hilton, Nicole, yeah. mm-hmm. and then they rolled out 24 from bell yeah they, they showed that all game long all game long and it was like first and ten eight man box and then they run the ball you're not gonna get much oh, yeah. but i do think there is deeper problems than that there were two plays i think rpos so it was uh cup in the backfield and mm-hmm. then he motioned quick like out mm-hmm. and then they run from the gun and then there's like five men in the box it's like four linemen and then one linebacker because mm-hmm. like when cup moves 55 logan wilson he moves out with it so right. there was like only five yeah so everybody was blocked and then i think it was two plays both no game yeah. so there yeah. were problems about no game offensive line blocking i'm not sure whether it's matched up not mm-hmm. sure whether it's intentional by the bengals they do something not sure what but it was very clear that one they often run into bad looks for mm-hmm. me if there's eight men in the box don't run right. check and do something else and two when they have good looks They don't get nothing. So there, there's there's definitely something that I might not be seeing. You know, I, I might not know what information out there, but it's just not working. Yeah, and I think the challenge too is, I mean, uh, as solid as the Rams run game is all year, they don't have a lot of explosive runners in their backfield. A lot of yeah, their and that's tend also, that's to be more of the like push forward. I mean, Sony... PlayStation sometimes <laughs> do it, but not like he could when he was first in the league. So, um, you know, they don't have the kind of explosive back that can really make something out of nothing when they when you get a bad look and you're some of these guys, you know, can sort of grind their way through, but he, they don't quite have that. And so, yeah, I think that was that was part of the challenge too. I think one of the things that worth mentioning was that once they switched to Stafford, um, not sure it was it was intentional. Maybe he didn't get enough reps, but the handoff kind of looked janky a little bit. It's yeah, always, yeah, yeah, yeah. Been, been a little bit. Yeah. It's always a bit late. Not sure. Maybe not enough snaps in training camp. Not yeah, sure yeah. what. But That's the handoff point. doesn't look as good when it was Jared Goff back then. Jared Goff back so, then, yes. And maybe he's not used to it because Detroit never has. It's not That's since true. Barry Sanders. Yeah, you know, because. Back, so because, he's never had to hand off to anybody. Yeah, because, you know, Detroit, uh, you know. <laughs> and I think not having their top tight end also matters. Yeah, yeah Tyler Lee. Yeah. 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 A couple of guys yeah. injured, so. Yeah, and actually, That's Robert true. Woods is a pretty solid blocker too. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah but yeah. he's a good yeah. blocking receiver, so that that definitely hurt them a lot. Agree, agree. Yeah, just imagine what this team would have done if they had, had Woods, yeah, and and Beckham out for the whole game, like out there on the field with. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, this could have been a slaughter. A slaughter match. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't agree. see how you could have covered all of those guys. You know? Yeah, we're Okay. And just, uh, and, uh, mm-hmm. Let me just remind you, uh, on, on the regular season, our running game is already been an issue for such a long time in regular season because yeah. I know Cam Akers is injured because we don't we didn't have any backup, so we, we, we have to sign Sonny Michel back that right. time. 
Yep. But I don't, but I don't think it's work that much because we already have Stafford. I just don't realize the pattern is when Stafford play. Stafford always is often to play with play action passes. It's mm. a lot often that the the yeah. last year when Jared Goff when Jared Goff still a quarterback, mm-hmm. I don't think the play action is going well because Jared Goff has more of a limitation in it. So when Stafford came and play, mm-hmm. a lot of play action that I have then I have seen a lot of this decision. And our running game is not it's not good because first the chemicals issue and I think that's what what Fadil said. The, our our first effect is quite janky with the hand because I don't know when when training camp they already they train with just only the pass blocking or something. They don't really focus on running game, running running blocking. I don't know for sure, but this will be an issue for for this season. Yeah. Okay. Oke, okay. kita ke next drive ya. Next drive kan uh, ada pass incomplete, uh, short pass, short pass, and then habis itu, oh my god, Stafford, Stafford, udah waktunya dikit lagi, no look pass, okay. uh, damn, uh. no look pass, but oke, okay, uh, gue mau bilang ya, ini kan Stafford yang lempar ya kan, kalau misalnya Mahomes yang lempar tuh sampai musim depan tuh kayaknya tuh. Ya, yeah, Mahom tuh kalau misalnya bikin no look pass, ntar dibikin series, dokumentari, kan biasa gitu kan gorengan media. A break, kan? a break, a break down with the physics. Break down ya sama yeah. peneliti ilmiah gitu Mahom. Ya, yeah, padahal tuh sebenarnya kan pasti pernah ditanya sama Rogers kan pas itu yang um, uh, lawan Chiefs atau kapan deh? Kalau nggak salah, gue uh, lupa. Kan ditanya bagaimana pendapat anda sama no look passnya uh, Mahom? Terus kata Rogers, Rogers dia bilang ada orang nomor 9 di Detroit yang udah ngelakuin itu sejak lama. Aduh tuh. Emang sebetu Stafford kalau bisa dibilang Mahomes, Mahomes uh, lebih sering. Stafford jauh lebih sering. Ya karena di Detroit aja. <laughs> ya karena lu tahu Detroit. Ya, dalam gua nggak bisa mengungkapkan dengan kata-kata <laughs> buat Detroit. Nah, okay. But uh, for uh, Mark, Mark. When you saw that no look pass from Stafford to Cooper Cup, well, in game you you can see that because a lot of things happen that right. really really fast. But and then NFL released the replay. Do you some some sort of like uh, you know like Stafford got your respect or you uh, you have so much in awe to Stafford because yeah, it's just yeah. It, it's really impressive because once again, like it, there's so many players who would never try that in such a game so huge because they would get nervous. Yeah, of course. And worry about looking stupid if they screw it up. Yeah. Throw it away or get it intercepted. So to have that kind of confidence to be like, I'm just, I'm so, I know exactly how this works. There's no way that that the you know the defensive backs are going to figure out what I'm doing. It's yeah. just really, it was really cool. I mean, I watched that replay over and over again when they released it because I was like, wait a minute, that can't be possible. Like, yeah. they must have just, like, looked at it wrong. There's no way he's not looking at this guy in the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. Like, to be, yeah, it's really impressive. It was cool. And you could just tell, like, uh, you know, he didn't need a lot of snaps to figure out mm-hmm. his sort of psychic connection with um, Cooper Cup. And with his receiving yep. core, because he just is like, I know, I know exactly where he'll be, and I can, I can look off the entire defense, mm-hmm. and it's not going to be a problem because I've got the arm still, and I can do that. And yeah, uh, Dil, kalau kalau yeah. dilihat ya itu kan kalau lihat dari replaynya kan, Stafford kayak ngeliat ke pasti tight endnya Blanton ya. Eighty eight, ah, delapan Iya, kan. Yeah. Tapi kan sempat dibilang itu Von Bell karena ngeliat Stafford ke tight endnya. Van Bell nyamperin ini kan, ketatannya kan. And abis itu dia, Stafford, no look pass ke Cooper Cup yang belakangnya karena Von Bell yang maju, nyamperin tatannya, Cooper Cup kebuka, langsung no look pass. Ah, itu kalau dari Cooper Cup-nya sendiri, kalau nggak salah udah di double team ya? Well, yeah, so Cup had a guy outside of him, yeah. and then he got a guy over the top, mm-hmm. so... That, that's a, that's, that's a double, and then there's the guy waiting, you know, down low, which is yeah. Von Bell. Right. Yeah, Von Bell, yeah. Nah, no, setelah mm. lu melihat Matt Stafford that no look pass ya, yang gue gua sih 
gue masih nggak nyangka ya Super Bowl di mana itu match yang buat nentuin apa kalau bakal dapat pialanya apa enggak di tiga menit tuh gue gocek ini pas menit ke tiga menit enam detik loh yeah. lagi ketinggalan no look pass no lu kalau dengan cap space yang situasinya masih kurang bagus ini Stafford menurut tuh bakal ditahan berapa lama nih karena ini uh, nah lanjut lanjut I think until, until the contract, the contract is, is ended, ended because we, staff will still have I think two years uh, one year one year oh, one year remaining dari Sisa Alliance satu tahun 23 juta nilainya uh, okay. hmm. why we don't why we don't ex, why we don't extend staff because mm. just one just only one season play in in the it's such a good team such mm. a good environment good franchise mm-hmm. Yes, with just only one season, he bring the team to the Super Bowl. So why why we, we would, why we would not extend him? Because he 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 opening so much the play that we could never been there before. Such a fast play, and of, and don't forget about the look pass too, because the chemistry with the Cooper Cup is unmatched, unmatched not with any duo of quarterback wide receiver. The chemistry is unlike any other because. I, I was read I, I was read on a Twitter or something because they're spending so much time together for building the chemistry between between them. So hmm. yeah, because I I think it paid off in the end. Ah, okay. Jadi kan uh, kalau ke- kalian mau mempelajari tentang keuangan NFL karena gue juga mempelajari dan gue wah ini seru juga sih belajar tentang ku- keuangan NFL gaji cap space gimana cara ngatur ngatur cap space dan lain-lain. Kalian buka spot track. Ini ada link gimana caranya ngebukain uh, cap space RAM sampai 100 juta loh. Nah, uh, for uh, Stafford ada tiga opsi karena Stafford masih ada satu tahun 23 juta dolar sisa dari kontraknya yang dulu yang dibawa dari Lions ke Rams. Tiga opsi. Yang pertama gak ngapa-ngapain dibiarin aja kontraknya itu. Jadi Stafford bakal main di sisa kontraknya. Yang kedua, di restructure yang 23 juta itu jadi signing bonus. Terus tambahin 4 void years buat nge-spread cap-nya itu. Jadi, wah ini void years sebenarnya agak advance ya. Jadi nggak gue jelasin nih, karena ini terlalu berat uh, pembahasannya. Uh, nanti kita bakal bahas di sosial media kita nanti. Ma- ma- jadi makanya yang tadi gue bilang di awal kan, follow semua sosial media kita biar nggak ketinggalan sama NFL Indonesia. Nah, yang ketiga... Ini yang gue menarik ya, karena ini ada tulisannya yang ini ya, selanjutnya. Jadi, Stafford di extend uh, kontrak baru dengan proyek, proyeksinya 4 tahun 168 juta, tapi dengan syarat, atau enggak gini, opsi lainnya, dia ngikutin caranya Brady dan Breeze dengan ambil diskon. Nah, hmm. Deal, kalau lu jadi last need, lu bakal ambil opsi yang mana satu dua atau tiga? Not sure yeah. So so what I think mm-hmm. the Rams had probably one of the best front office in the mm-hmm. league, and they to be the best you have to follow certain rules, mm-hmm. which I think one of the rules that kind of circulates around is that once you hit a certain age, it doesn't matter how good you are that year or mm-hmm. a year before, you don't give more than three years much much so you have to always have exit plans with older players mm-hmm. with breeze and brady not only they took discount it was more year to year with them mm-hmm. so everything guaranteed is like one year only one year only not sure if they're gonna mess things up or not but my guess you know they've been really good in team building So I don't think they're gonna mess things up. So it's I think it's gonna be like a three-year deal with like only one year guaranteed, and then they're gonna rework each season. I think yeah. that's the kind of thing that makes sense, at least to me, from the Rams' perspective. Okay. But, yeah, and I think one of the uh, you know things to think about too is just because the Rams are so sort of transactional, like they built this team. Mm-hmm. giving away the draft picks and being very smart with the cap and restructuring when they needed to, they don't have the same kind of sentimental attachment. Mm-hmm. Like 
For example, your team fought ill with a certain recently retired Big Ben quarterback who, you know, a lot of people would say probably should have retired maybe two years ago when the arm yeah. was, you know, able to make throws more than three yards horizontally. Yep. And, and right. And so, but that's, but the problem is it's such, such an emotional attachment to the players because yeah. that's how their front office works. It's much more of a family atmosphere. They keep these guys in, they seem to really have affection for them, which is great. I think as a way to live and it's probably fun to work there, but in the business like football, you know, you have to acknowledge the reality when these guys run out of gas Mm -hmm. And the Rams don't seem like a team that's very sentimental about it. I mean, a lot of teams would never have traded away Jared Goff until it was way too late, right? Until he's yep. already in his 30s. Yep. And they've already maxed out every year and kind of failed in the playoffs over and over and never really gotten above, the, you know, over the hump. But felt like, well, we drafted him and he's a hometown, he's our hometown guy now. And everybody loves him. It's impossible. And they were like, no. We, we need to get better. We're, we're shipping them out. And I don't think they'll hesitate to do that, uh, you know, to not keep Stafford if they feel he's not going to help them anymore. And, I mean, as we've been talking about, the weather's great in L.A., so it's not like it's yeah. going to be hard for them to get another quarter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like everyone will now want to come play for them because they seem like a good organization and who doesn't want to live in Southern California? Yeah. Okay. Nah. Uh, okay. Ini next play next next playnya kan uh, ada run eight yards lumayan ya uh, dari Akers dan juga pas dari uh, Stafford ke Cup incomplete incomplete. Nah ini yang kontroversi. Oke okay, jadi uh, udah third and goal di eight yard line di yard ke 8 Matt Stafford lempar ke Cooper Cup ke tengah kan. Dijagain sama Luke, uh, sorry, Logan Wilson Ternyata dibilang penalti defensive holding Nah, gue gak bakal nanya Noah karena Noah bilang pasti itu holding Nah, gue nanya yang lain ya Of course it's holding Iya yeah, kan <laughs> Nah, gue nanya lain ya Oke, okay, so, uh, deal Menurut lo itu defensive holding gak? Karena ini defensive holdingnya kan sangat ini ya Sangat membuat uh, kesempatannya buat Rams Ya kan abis itu Tarjun yang menang ya Tapi uh, Ini Defensive ho- Ini defensive holding apa enggak sih? Kadang kan sebenarnya kan cuman ya Kalau dilihat kan Ya Nyentuh doang Tapi kan Mungkin ya rules is rules gitu kan Dan pasti fans Rans bilang Ya itu holding of course gitu kan Tapi kalau menurut gimana deh? <laughs> Personally No That's not No Oke okay, kenapa? Because I, I think he touched him And then he turns outside So his hand is like there yeah. And yeah. then Tries to go, kind of pulls his in and then switch hands. So mm-hmm. I think that's not a hold. That's but, not a hold. Okay. But I do think there is a change of tone. Ah, to perbatan. Because I, I, I do think you, you brought up the points that the first 55 minutes only four flags. Yeah. That's already. Itu yang dah dah terkubas. Okay. The the dancing guy from the bench. So right. That's one. And then so there's really only like three other penalties, right? Yeah. I, I do think like in big games, like there is a saying that, you know, they don't call that in Super Bowl. They're just going to let you play. They mm-hmm. play right? So they kind of did that. And then all of a sudden it just changed because later in that same drive, I think a couple of plays later, they also called, I think. Uh, another, penalty, yeah. Did, uh, another, offset, right? yeah. Offset. Yeah, that that's the OPI and the targeting, but there is also was it that drive? There is yeah, also there one, I think. Unnecessary point. roughness from Bell. No, I thought it was another, another DPI. DPI. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There is another DPI. So I think there is a change of tone, which all of a sudden the ref said, "Okay, we're gonna call this." So I don't have the problem with calling the first one. The, the Logan Wilson one, yep. I don't have a problem with that. But the way they changed the officiating right away after nah. that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. all have, of a sudden they have all those penalties right at the end was, it sort of, it, it made the game a little less fun. And it had been a great game so far and pretty cleanly played. And I yeah. just felt like, okay, well now it's, I mean, frankly, I know I'm not supposed to bring it up again, but now it was starting to look like when Dallas plays. And- <laughs> 
all they do is commit penalties every play and embarrass themselves. So, um. <laughs> but uh, Mark, uh, I didn't yeah, know uh, actually football could be played so cleanly. It was very impressive. <laughs> uh, yeah. Seeing you know people get the snap off on time, knowing how much time on the clock, it's really impressive. <laughs> nah, oke. Okay. Tadi kan gue sempat bilang juga ya, karena gue udah bilang di 55 menit uh, menit 55 menit match cuma 4 flag. 5 menit terakhir 4 flag. Oke, okay, Mark. Uh, I saw uh, someone in Twitter that or I don't know some broadcasting say that well in final the quality of uh, refereeing should be increased not give a uh, flag easily in you know like some uh, um, crucial moment but uh, do you agree that the quality in just uh in, in, in just super bowl should be increased yeah i mean normally you would hope they would get their kind of best officials and i know they they review officials records all year round you know they're always looking to make sure that guys aren't missing stuff or 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 calling too many flags during the time they're a referee. Uh, so you hope that that's the case. Um, in in this case, yeah, I think my, my problem is similar to a lot of other people's. This was just the inconsistency of it. It's like, if you're going to play, that's fine. No objections there, but just keep letting them play. Don't sort of then all of a sudden decide like, okay, now we got to watch this really closely. It's like, well, then – that changes the way everybody's strategy goes and you're, you're going to call different plays if you're not going to be able to get away with certain stuff, of course. And so it was just really kind of jarring. It was a bit of a surprise to see like, oh, wait a minute, this is a very different game now mm -hmm. uh, with the officials really calling it much tighter. Uh, and so that was, that was a surprise. So I just, I would, you would hope for more consistency really uh, yeah. in a Super Bowl in a game like this. But, yeah. Okay. Nah, Terus kan abis itu ini ya uh, yang touchdownnya di offset ya repeat play abis repeat itu play. penalti lagi defensive yeah. pass interference oleh pemain favorit kita semua ya Eli Apple oh, <laughs> Eli Apple man. Oh my god kalau yeah. kalian nggak tahu ini Eli, Eli Apple ini memang gue sering bilang kan nih cocoknya banyak banget nih bacot banget tapi mainnya dan Eli Apple ini kemarin jagain Cooper Cup kebobolan dua touchdown dan kalau kalian lihat di sosial medianya itu semua hampir semua pemain khususnya mantan teammate-nya ya karena kayak di teammate-nya dia dulu di Giants kan dia kan um, di draft di Giants terus pindah ke Saints bis itu ke Bengals <laughs> nah uh, teammate dia yang di Giants sama di ini di Saints langsung ngeceng-cengin dia terus juga dia sempat nge-trash talkin pemain Raven sama Chief juga langsung pada ikut-ikutan Iya, <laughs> Eli Apple, Eli Apple, aduh. Nah, abis itu uh, sempat run ya, no gain, tapi abis itu touchdown, Rams <laughs> buat memimpin 23-20. And then the last drive, Bengals. Padahal ini ya, first playnya langsung ini ya, apa uh, passing ke Jamar Chase, 17 yeah. yards. Oke, okay. uh, No, lu mm -hmm. uh, saat nonton Ramsey versus uh, Chase, ini Ramsey kewalahan gak sih jagain Chase? I don't think so because mm. Ramsey have Ramsey play with a good coverage. I mean, the moment when he covers Chase, although there is some play he he got he got. He got burned or something with that. But, but overall, for, for the overall matches, he play good game. He covered, he covers Chase real well. But it's not necessarily an issue for me because the task is not, it's not from Ramsey blowing, blowing the coverage from Chase. Although there is one play in it, but but, but overall thing, he play good game. Hmm. Okay. Kalau nggak salah ini yang uh, yang tadi dibilang sama Nuha yang sempat kena burn itu. Yang di second quarter ya deal ya, yang long pass ke, yeah. di kanan kan? First half, yeah. there was half. One, Iya kan, one. yang bisa touchdown kan ya? Kalau nggak salah ya? Nah Ya, yeah, uh, touchdown, touchdown from Chase Touchdown yeah. from Chase Nah, tapi abis itu sayangnya fourth down Ah, Aaron Donald He's... Aduh, 
Hendron Donald ini emang yang kita udah sering bilang ya di podcast ya badak emang nih orang ini ya. Dua kali ngesek dan total seknya Rams ke Buro 7. Yeah. 7. Dan akhirnya Donald got his ring ya yeah, finally yeah. got his ring. So Mark for defensive perspective uh, and of course we know that Bengals offensive line are Ah, uh, terrible. So, yeah. uh, do you uh, from uh, do you think from uh, Rams defense who is who has the most influential uh, role, Aaron Donald or maybe Jalen Ramsey or other? Oh, definitely, Aaron Donald mm. uh, is a game changer. Uh, I think too. Just thinking back to that second interception. you know, to start off the second half. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the Bengals have third and three, right, when they're driving down. Yep. Uh, and then it just, the play gets blown up and they get knocked back another, what, 10 yards, and they have to kick the field goal. And that was the start of it. I just think, um, yeah, he's just such a disruptive force that you're always having to account for him. And uh, especially once Burrow decided not to, to hold on to the ball even just slightly longer to try and look for bigger plays it was just enough i mean he's so fast and he's so tough to contain and he distracts so many of the offensive line because they like we don't want to get embarrassed by Aaron Donald so we're going to put everything we have into stopping him and then it leaves everybody else open and i know what they did too is it looks like what they did was they put Miller sometimes back in pass coverage like they Yeah, like, Von Miller yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then he would kind of pull back into pass coverage and they would was it Ernst Jones? I think was on the other side. They would yeah, of bring him Ernst Jones. They would bring him from the other side in rush and all of a sudden you could tell that was really confusing the the Bengals cuz uh, they were like wait a minute, Von Miller, you brought this guy in, you figure he's going to be trying to get the quarterback every time. So it really it helped confuse them but It all starts with Aaron Donald. I mean, he's just wow, like that guy. Maybe just really, really impressive. I haven't watched. I mean, I've watched a decent amount of Rams games over the years, but I haven't watched nearly as many as you know a lot of other teams that I watch, just because they're on the West Coast. So, timing-wise, I don't see those games because I live on the East Coast most of the time when I'm in the U.S. So, I haven't watched him nearly that much, and so it's just you just forget how dominant he is. Mm. up front uh and 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 how you have to change your entire i mean there hasn't been a defensive player quite like that uh since really since like Lawrence Taylor maybe Deion yeah. Sanders was similar in that way that you just, the entire uh i guess you could say like Ray Lewis had that effect to uh, guys like that Ed Reed where you're really changing your entire strategy because you're like we can't risk Even if we can contain him for a little bit, it's just a, a matter of time before he figures something out mm-hmm. and he breaks through. Uh, and yeah, wow, uh, that guy really, really impressive. He's, he's really dominant, oh, man. Uh, and and there's no doubt that he is one of the goat of defensive player, of course. Yeah, for sure. Of course. Hall of Fame lock in, I think. Hall of Fame yeah, lock in, pasti lah. Donald tuh udah pasti first ballot lah, udah pasti. udah pasti banget udah tiga depo yeah. kan udah gitu masuk all decade team tahun 2010 dan akhirnya get his ring finally accolades. kan finally yeah, kan ya yeah, he just cemented himself as one of the goats of defensive player nah akhirnya game selesai 2023-2020 congrats buat Rams jadi apa juara kedua ya sorry juara kedua kalinya dalam sejarah Super Bowl ya jadi uh, terakhir sebelum menutup ini Sebelum nonton podcast, gue bak cuma nanya satu ya buat uh, ke Fadil Haya, Dil. Tujuh sek ke Joe Burrow. Oh my god. Eh, uh, menurut lu? Iya, menurut lu ini oh, this first round thing I, I read too um, hmm. for Joe Burrow's final 22 offensive snaps, mm-hmm. he was sacked six times. Ah, yeah. like. That's insane. Mm, like six 25% times. of the time he was getting mm. sacked. He oh didn't even God. include like That's other close. times he gets hit or hurried in the pocket. I mean, wow. Oh, that was just insane. Oh my God. Nah. Uh, Dil, 
menurut lu Bengals di draft nanti ambil berapa OL buat Buro? Kasian lo ini Buro kalau nggak dilindungin karena kan cap space-nya Bengals gua cek main banyak loh. Nah, ambil berapa OL di draft buat Joe Buro? Kasian. Uh, so one of the things that uh, everybody was saying is like go do something like the Chiefs, right? Ah. You lost the Super Bowl, it's because your offensive line isn't good enough. Uh-huh. Draft some guys, get some free agent, totally remake your offensive line. Mm-hmm. One of the things that is actually happening is that the Bengals actually tried to do something. So they signed yep. Hinton Spade, they drafted Jackson Car- Carman. Carman. Yeah. So they, they try to do something, but it doesn't work out. So that that's like a difference because like you don't want to kind of like double down in like multiple years and then I don't know maybe you had a surplus or maybe you have to trade some guys away but in terms of addressing I would like to think it was more there is a couple of plays I think I remember it was more on the receivers and not getting the ball out quick because yeah. yeah. I, I, I just think that there is some sort of like, are they not preparing for all this? Mm-hmm. You know, it, it just kind of felt like Joe Burrow is just trying to survive with, by like everybody's coming at him. So I think there is, there's people who are kind of mad, quote unquote, and then saying like the Bengals made it to the Super Bowl despite of Zach Taylor, not because of him. So I I would like to focus more a little bit on that rather than the offensive line quality because I think mm-hmm. the Rams did a great job uh, at least game plan wise. Mm-hmm. Second half they changed a lot of things. Yeah, they 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 showed some stuff. They like Mark said they dropped their edge guys. They rush fifty. They do stunts. They put Donalds like to three man guys. One right. side, mm-hmm. they made it hard for the Bengals to like block one on one, and I think the adjustment then came from the Bengals coaching staff. It's not necessarily, yeah, you're gonna get beat by Aaron Donald, but when you get beat that much, something is wrong, and it's mm-hmm. probably with your coaching staff, not yeah. necessarily with you know the players have to shoulder all the burden. Yeah, and they were having a decent amount of success with Joe Mixon. And that's yeah. always a great way to stop a good pass rush is if your running backs fast enough and tough enough, they can run past them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, the fact that they abandoned that quickly when it was like, no, Mixon can still get it up. He's a tough enough runner. Uh, you know, you could, you could throw him out there a little bit more and try yeah, yeah. maybe bubble screens or just a few sort of things just to kind of keep the chains moving and then keep the pressure off of the offensive line and and off of burrow mm-hmm. but yeah i think they they just they got kind of overwhelmed i mean not that i could do much better when you've got guys like that on the defensive line bearing down on you every play it's easy to say that we would have the, the solution but yeah it's it, i think a lot of it has to do with coaching coaching so. okay Uh, dua lagi karena gue boring belum nanya iklan favorit ya. <laughs> nah buat uh, Noah, no. ini hmm. kan uh, Rams kasih 72 rushing yards ke Joe Mixon 15 kali lari doang lah. Dan gue lihat juga dari mus dari awal musim sampai sekarang ini masalah hmm. di inside linebacker. Apakah Rams bakal nge-trade picks-nya lagi karena f the picks <laughs> buat cari inside linebacker yang elit karena Ya, Rams baru punya first round tahun 2024 loh, bukan 2023, 2024. Apa gimana nih apa cari yeah. inside linebacker di draft di late di kan uh, 2022 Rams day 3 ya, baru day ketiga ya punya draft pick ya? Day, day kedua. Day kedua udah ada ya? Nah. Hmm. Itu mesti ngapain nih buat nyari inside linebacker karena memang isu defense-nya Rams kan di run run ini ya, run defense ya. Run defense. Yep. Hmm. I don't think they will figure it out lately because just just two season 
the problem is all the same inside line backer all all along yeah uh-uh. from 2020 and 2021 the problem is always inside line backer and still they can figure it out they already drafted rookies Ernest John in 2021 in 2020 as well Tyrell Lewis or Tyrell, yeah Tyrell, Tyrell Lewis uh-huh. I think it came it came from Oklahoma or something I forget but the that, but it it, it 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 didn't work out. The problem is it didn't work out because we we couldn't rely only for the for defensive linemen. Mm-hmm. We couldn't rely on just only for that, that for person. We can't rely we can rely on that. We need someone inside. But I still we still figure it out. The team we still didn't figure it out. Maybe they will try to in free agency. They try to searching. Maybe we have a free agent. With mm-hmm. agent stuff, some some players, I think, and the Falcons just wave Dante Fowler. Just the recent news, so mm-hmm. I think, yeah, maybe it's a little just a, a chance. I still have maybe Rams will still have given him a chance to coming back to coming back to Rams and show his work again. And because 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 Dante Fowler was in the Rams and he played a good games in 2019, and and because of that. Mm. Okay. Uh, kind of Falcons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we still. Yeah, I think. Oke. Okay. Uh, ini ya buat menutup podcast ini karena tadi gue udah bilang su- tidak ada Super Bowl kalau nggak ada iklan ya. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> kalau uh, my favorite, my own favorite because mm-hmm. I rewatch it again. My own favorite is uh, the Silverado commercial because uh, it. Uh, it was a, you know, like remake of The Sopranos. Oh yeah, intro. that was fun. Wow, I like that one too. I because The Sopranos, uh, one of the greatest TV series ever. Uh, so <laughs> they did they remake it with uh, with uh, his senior, his daughter. Yeah, and yeah. son. Yeah, and his son. Uh, because the actor of The Sopranos has. Pass away, right, right. So yeah, that's my favorite. Uh, Mark, which uh, yeah, Tony Soprano, Tony Soprano. I was, I was yeah. sorry, Tony Soprano's uh, daughter and son. Mark, which uh, Super Bowl ads is your I favorite? Really liked, um, I really thought the Arnold Schwarzenegger one was pretty. Oh funny. yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. yeah. Where he was uh, Zeus with the Zeus, electric yeah. car and zapping. I thought that was pretty cute. Mm-hmm. Uh, I enjoyed that one. Um, and the the real estate one for Barbie Dreamhouse. Oh yeah, Bar- yeah. It turns out uh, insurance, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. It was for a mortgage or insurance, mortgage, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, uh, I thought that was pretty clever, just with the the other dolls who were like trying to buy the same property, and then they buy the He-Man castle instead. Or yeah. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was pretty funny. I, I like those were probably my two my two that I really liked. Okay. Dil, lo apa nih kan favoritnya kemarin? No man, ah, uh, I like the the, the dog robot, ro- robot. Oh yeah. Ah oh, yeah yeah yeah, yang itu ya. Yeah. It was it was kind of like heartwarming, you know. It, he jump and then the the battery runs out and then you know he got charged. So I thought it was that was like a felt good like. That's that's pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah, that was fun. Okay, terakhir, no iklan favorit apa? Karena kan kalau I, oh, apa, apa? I think it's the most annoying ad in the Super Bowl is from Coinbase. Oh iya yeah, Coinbase <laughs> di QR code ya iya 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 iya. He just an a QR code running running like a bouncing a DVD. Bouncing the DVD DVD logo sih ya 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 ya. And nothing else. But yeah, yeah. we follow we follow we follow along in the most minimalistic Super Bowl commercial ever. Yeah yeah yeah. Because with Also, when I, I read the news because the USA Today has I said the, the ad is cost about thirteen million. Thirteen million dollars, just for that. Thirteen million dollars, just just to run a QR code and they spend money, so much money because with that ad. But yeah, it's, I think it's pretty effective. It's effective, yeah. And yeah, no, so that, everybody remembers that ad. That's yeah. true. Yeah, but who doesn't remember that? Ad? But what makes it and what? Yeah, lanjut, lanjut, lanjut. And after the after the ad, the company apps the reportedly that reportedly crashed after a lot yeah, of people website, have tried yeah. to scan right, that QR code yeah. and try to open the app, 
and it got crashed. Yeah, and it got crashed. <laughs> crash, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what bothers me with that Coinbase app itu yang gue yang gue kesel gak kena pojokan itu. It, it doesn't it, it didn't hit the corner like correct because it it's like oddly satisfying moment when you when that logo hit the uh, corner. So yeah, it's it's simple, annoying, but effective because a lot of people watching Super Bowl so you have to do something that is not traditional like well it's traditional but it's not like what uh people expecting because right. karena kan orang uh, expectnya kan iklan Super Bowl pasti wah wow, meriah wah wow, tahu-tahu lah ini cuman QR code mood gerak-gerak doang kayak logo DVD <laughs> kan because uh, I thought that my TV was broken me too because of uh, is this uh, uh, is there anything happen with this and uh, and then there's that it's an ad so, oh my god yeah it was crazy, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so yeah jadi itu uh, podcast Super Bowl 56 review kita. Nah, pasti kan kalian dengerin nah ini Inggris semua ya enggak apa-apa bahas kalian belajar, belajar bahasa Inggris lah ya kan. Jadi uh, thank you uh, Mark of course uh, and and always our special guest for thank our so podcast. Much. Hopefully you can join us again for a future podcast. Yeah, let's and, do it. Yeah. Uh, and then oh uh, yeah and also our fantasy league eh? for oh, 2023. I have to redeem myself <laughs> after that terrible. <laughs> 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 Oke, okay, nah, uh, thank you juga buat Alpha Dayo dan Nuha yang udah join. Nah, jadi buat kalian yang nonton semua, jangan lupa seperti biasa subscribe, kalian jangan subscribe biar nggak ketinggalan sama NFN Indonesia. Like, comment, share video ini juga follow semua sosial media kita di deskripsi video ini langsung join aja nggak usah malu-malu. Karena gue udah bilang dari ya, kemarin kan kalau udah ketinggalan NFL beritanya satu aja udah kena ketinggalan semua. Makanya jadi gue sama malu soalnya join. Uh, buat yang dengerin audio only di Spotify langsung follow aja biar kita upload dapat notifikasi. Jadi thank you udah nonton musim 2021 udah, tra- udah berakhir tapi konten kita nggak bakal habis. Jadi yang tadi gue bilang follow sosial media kita. Oke okay? jadi thank you udah nonton. See you di... Take konten-konten care, selanjutnya dan musim 2022 ya. Karena season, jangan lupa... Guys. Yeah, free agency it's, it's, it's. bakalan gila dan draft juga bentar lagi jadi thank you semuanya dan nonton dan dengerin see you di episode selanjutnya dadah semuanya thank you ciao terima kasih telah mendengarkan podcast